very good morning to all my subscribers, my viewers, the obedient family, active citizens and Nigerians. Thank you for joining me this morning. Now, is it not quite hypocritical to remove the beam from somebody's eyes when there are moats in your eye? That is the reaction of Nigerians to the speech of Bola Ahmed Tunubu yesterday in Saudi Arabia. Trust me, they started from saying it is disgraceful that you came, got to Saudi Arabia and the governor was the one that received you. While they say, yes, maybe it's on the invitation of the governor that he came. Nigerians are saying it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you are losing relevance in the international stage. And that is the problem. We are quickly losing relevance in the international stage. And that is why, you know, he was received by governor. That is the belief. I'm going to be showing you that and also his speech and then the condemnation that came with that speech. You are talking about Israel war, the war between Israel and, you know, some other Arabic countries and the rest. And we have a lot of insurgents in the country, a lot of uh, terrorist groups springing up. What have you done about it? How have you dealt? with the issue in your own that you are looking for how to create peace i remember he was almost the one that created a very he almost created a war between niger and nigeria thank god for those that know how to expose like david hundeyu that brought the story to lamlight and because of that they started creating awareness and reactions from nigerians that made them have to look at it some other time as uh, uh, another time and say look this is not workable now i'm going to be talking about that and we're actually going to be diving into it but let me quickly also say that peter obi has received defense from that pastor pastor i i don't i can't remember his name but he's a popular pastor that came out to talk about peter obi's video stuff nigerians have have finished the man the man had to come back to apologize because nigerians are saying you guys are the biggest problem of this country they started asking him questions about events that have happened and his voice was not heard you know it is quite unfortunate we are going to be talking about those that thing because truth be told i don't want to let i don't want to say anything until i allow you to see what, what he said the reactions the massive reactions i'm telling you reactions are trading the social media space on that matter and then when i come back we can fully discuss this because the truth is eh, let us stop deceiving ourselves the, 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 there is there is so much so much that these pastors can do and they have deliberately refused to do it but anybody that calls out their tithes and offerings and the fact that people are coming to their churches they start attacking the person let me allow you what this video and the reactions and when i come back we'll continue Every day on the internet, you see someone say, instead of spending all this time in church, having vigils every day. Which church do you know that has vigils every day? Some might have vigils every day for a season, but no church has vigils every day. Please don't get me wrong. I have profound respect for the person who said this. It is part of my privileged roles in Christ and in the body of Christ to set the record straight on some things like this. If churches don't have vigils every day, how often is too often? Twice a week? Thrice a week? Do you realize if you saw someone who goes to the gym every day, you won't think he's wasting economic hours. Don't you see that the bias is hidden? If you saw someone who hung out with his friends thrice a week, you say it's good work-life balance. But someone who goes to church thrice a week, we say we need to be more productive as a nation. First and foremost is the gaslighting for me. Nobody who has been in government passed or present has the right to make such a comment. For God's sake, if the people don't go to church, have you provided jobs for them? Where are the jobs? I say this with all sense of humility. Please don't get me wrong. Sometimes the level of output in my life in one month, if it was someone else's highlight for a whole year, you've tried. If all you do in a year is to release an album, you've tried. You have to understand I have like five full-time jobs. I believe in productivity, but please don't let anyone talk down on your devotion, your faith in the Lord protect it with all you have now let me quickly give you another pastor's take on this before we get into the reactions dangote is selling salt he's selling sugar am i right now he's building refinery so you that want to be sleeping in the church too sleeping in the church every night monday night uh, tuesday night wednesday night you are doing in the church through the night. During the day, you are useless. You are not selling anything. You prophesy on your head from today to tomorrow. Call boy, you won't have. In now you've seen the second pastor actually re-echoing what Peter Obi said, right? Now Nigerians actually went to dig out this, um, you know, poster to show him that there are churches that hold 120 days night vigil, you know, in the church, and then they reacted. Let's take Daily Faro to miss reaction to what he said. He said. Deliverer to me tweeted, he said, how many sermons has he preached in condemnation of the evil that has overtaken the country? Or is it enough 
for him to be nitpicking about what Peter Obi said on the podcast. What did he say about answers? Anything on the mind or tried for treason? election i beg that is don't even take him serious that is basically what they refer to, refer to me saying but there is somebody that really summed up the whole thing properly and that is the tweet i'm about to take next that did justice to the whole thing now salakot tweeted he said don't know if there is a longer version of this video but it is important to point out five premise or five premises one you started this clip with a lie pastor irene there are churches who hold vg for 15 days 30 days for five days ask around if there's if you want to cycle around litra every day as in 365 days per year then it becomes a game of semantics if a church organizes 30 days video twice a year that is 25 percent of the entire year 25 percent of anything is statistically significant so the use of every day is relationally relevant using gym appearances and friendship meetups as combative argument is weak videos run for about six to seven hours nobody goes to the gym for seven hours daily except it is their daily bread no one meets up with friends daily for seven hours based on your argument the only acceptable time for people to attend video in that frequency is if it is their daily bread two peter obi did not demonize acts of devotion he accurately described the laxity in our communal approach to productivity whilst pointing out indices hence the visual reference maybe watch the entire clip three in what capacity are you indirectly asking peter obi if he has provided jobs for them four where was this energy when an official legislation for Syria law floated publicly? Do you know it is still in reading? Five, Peter Obi isn't the problem of Nigeria. He raised the valid concern across multiple indices, pointing out lazy approach to communal productivity. Egging the Christian polity in this manner has only one repercussion, that base won't vote for him. The consequent repercussion wouldn't be his to bear, but of course, it will be good for the church as there will be more prayer points to raise. Now, trust me, this did justice to everything. I don't even need to take some more tweet because this has really, really, it, it, it hammered the man and it went, it struck the nail on the head as it's supposed to. Now, let's get back to the video and continue. Now, you've seen it, right? That is a clear metaphoric statement. And it's quite unfortunate that learned people have refused to see the wider picture, the bigger picture of what Peter Obi was saying. How you cannot depend on the church, going to church alone or praying to be productive or to make wealth or to be all right. You must always add your prayers with work. And I can tell you, he has, he's not the only one that I've said it. And you see me put a little bit of a snippet of Sam Adeyemi's, you know, message there. And this is not the first time Sam Adeyemi is talking about it. He has talked about it several times. That you cannot just be, if you like, sleep in the church 100 days. As far as you are not, you don't have something to do. At the end of the day, your prayer will be fruitless. God will always bless the works of people's hands. There is no money that falls from heaven. Manna does not. It's before. And I can tell you for real. The pastor that is saying that, oh, no church is going to do night You see a poster up there so that you can see that there are churches that will take a whole 120 days doing VG. That's how many months now? Every night. The problem with these men is that when three people they're supposed to attack, they don't attack them. A man came out and used fake bishops. Where were you? How many voices did we hear from the Christendom? Instead, it was social media users that were attacking him that, that are Christians. We've seen despicable thing. How somebody stood up in the house and want to make Sharia law a general a law. Trying to Islamize the nation. And then you still keep quiet. And suddenly Peter will be granted a podcast. podcast and then you found your orgasm. The problem is that they don't see that man finish. So anybody if you come criticize her for something that is the truth, you have, you want to, what do you want to deceive your members? It's only gullible people that now sit down and listen to some of these guys. You must be able to identify the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. God will never throw manna from heaven for you. Put work 
there is time for everything and peter will be have said it and thank god for the attackers you can see the attack was in fact if you go online if you see the attack he had to come and apologize but let me quickly let that sleep and show you the the interview in fact first of all i'll show you the arrival and what you know somebody said about the arrival of bola and then the, what he said the his speech and then the reactions and then we'll come back and wrap it up your excellencies your majesty the king blesses Assad, the custodians of the holy two holy mosques for convening this summit I thank the Crown Prince, Prime Minister of the Kingdom. Your ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, Salaamu Alaikum. It is with profound sense of duty that I call before you to so work to end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict very urgent. Conflict in Palestinian homeland has persisted for too long, inflicting immeasurable suffering on countless lives. As representative of nations that value justice, dignity, and the sanctity of human life, we have a moral obligation to collectively about immediate end to this conflict. It is not enough to issue condemnations the work must work towards an end to this aggression in Gaza, which has persisted for too long. Human lives, have you heard, has been lost. No security concern should come at the expense of many innocent lives. Now you've had it not right. I didn't want to strike the video because basically what he was talking about was how peace in um, Israel and Gaza and settle the conflict. Now let us take some reactions. Now, at first, Lady Sheep said something about when he came in. He said he landed in Saudi Arabia, but he was received by ordinary deputy governor. This is C finish as what you know get level outside Nigeria. Usually, it was high-ranking officials, VP or ministers, that welcome a president. They know born you well to treat Obasanjo like this. Yana the kill. Now you can see the, the broken heart emoji. Let's take some more. FS Yusuf tweeted. He said, Tinubu went to Saudi Arabia to talk about ceasefire in Gaza when a new terrorist group is waiting for him in northern Nigeria. Joker. Now you can see the reactions. You can see the reactions that are coming out. Let's take some more. Anzia Jose tweeted, he said, gives himself some air of self-importance. Does he think his voice carries weight in the grand scheme of teens in Gaza? He never finished Nigerian insecurity. He won't go and contribute to the resolution of conflict in Israel. Joke of the month. Ogalio tweeted, he said, just imagine my brother, he go to drink Panadol for other people, headache, when his own country, they suffer from cancer. Our Bia tweeted, he said, that's misplaced priority. A man who cannot fix his home is coming to advise another man on how to fix his home. What an irrelevant man trying to play relevancy. Now, Gospel tweeted, and he hasn't gone to meet with the Northerners for peace talk either. Neither will he ever go. Tinubu hasn't yet told Nigerians the real story behind all his travels abroad. At Olaide Jinks tweeted, he said, man that almost started an unprovoked war between Nigeria and Nigeria is playing peacemaker. Laugh out loud. Pedro tweeted, be very precise. Waiting in Sokoto. He is talking about humanitarian situation there. Being serious, like our own here is less. Now, these are the few tweets that I had to take out of the legions of tweets that are out there for his speech in Saudi Arabia. Now, you can actually see where Nigerians are coming from. And the pain. You know the feel for such actions let's get back to the video and wrap this up now you've seen it right that is what is you, you that is how you literally go out there and then you sit down and you start speaking as if you are relevant in the scheme of things of israel and the rest they don't know you they don't send you but then at the end of the day what triggered the reaction is the fact that we have a lot of insurgents happening in this country. We have a lot of insecurity. We have terrorist groups springing up. We have people that are sponsoring this terrorist group that are at the top. And for one day, it has not come to the attention of the DSS or to start fishing the financial supporters of these terrorists and hold them captive. 
It has not come to their, their minds. You have not done nothing about it. Every single day, people are shouting. Kidnappers are on the rise. If you go to the southeast, it's unknown gunmen everywhere. Unknown men everywhere. And then you come to the north, you see terrorist groups springing up. Once they suppress one, another one comes up from another angle. No zero protection of the borders. And that is why you see people from Chad, Niger, coming with their guns. When other people are pursuing Boko Haram's and the rest and bandits, they are landing in Nigeria and having a field day. And then you go out there and you are talking about a war that has nothing to do with you. And we say this is a normal thing. Is it not enough for, you know, other foreign countries to laugh at us? Is this not enough? And that is why I keep talking about traveling out. Eh, before you know, that's the same thing Buhari did for full eight years. Travel out, travel out, travel out. Say rubbish, say rubbish, say rubbish. And failed woefully. Destroy the economy some more. We have another replica doing the same thing. Every time you're out of the country, doing what exactly? Why don't you sit down and fix your own country? Why don't you sit down and look for solutions to the problem? Then you have a state house or whatever it is. His press people will come out and say, oh, he can walk from anywhere. Walk from where exactly? Are you not supposed to be in the country focusing on how to fix the economy, fix insecurity, fix a lot of things, better the lives of Nigerians, but no, because the target has never been the people. The people can go to hell or the people can die for all they care. So when people are crying about insecurity, this one, that one, deal with this problem now that is, is how do they get financed? These guys, they, they, they buy bullets. They, these bullets are bought. They have almost everything. Sophisticated network of criminals and terrorists. How do they get all those things? That is the question a lot of people are asking. How are they facilitated? To actually carry out these insurgencies. How? And then we have somebody trying to solve another mass problem. You have somebody's beam in his eye. You are trying to remove it when you have a moat in your eyes. A big one. That's what we are talking about. And that is why you see reactions anytime he talks. Because there are basic... If he's in Nigeria, he gives promises. Up to today, he's still campaigning. Almost two years down the line, we are still hearing campaign. Promises. We will. We will. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And every time he says that, the next day you hear that they use five billion to go and renovate a VP's house. The next day you hear that they use so so, -so amount of money to do so at, at every level, both at the state level. And I can tell you, a lot of people say, hey, let's concentrate on state governors. Let's do this one. Oga. If the man at the top is holding everybody responsible, everybody will sit up. Now the truth be that. When he says the box stops at his table, that is what it's supposed to be like. Let me drop this here, man. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so that whenever I drop a video, you'll be the first to be notified. Have a blessed remaining part of your day. Thank you. I'll see you next time.